everybody, Dan Ullman, Ashley Mayu, taking a look at the DRF race of the day for Friday, July the 5th, race number eight at Belmont at the Big A. Let's throw up the field for the grade two Brooklyn. We're going a mile and three eighths on the dirt. Seven entered, but all eyes are going to be on the number six next. Will be a prohibited favorite, and why not? He's widely regarded as the best staying dirt horse in North America. Don't believe me? He's won his last three races by a combined 48 lengths. Yeah, that's a, it's a big uh, record he's got going on the line. You mentioned four wins in a row. He's actually won, and you go further down, right? He's only had one loss since uh, September, really. And you look at his performances, he's been dominant. And he's a horse that, when you look at these sorts of races, mile and three ace, we don't talk, see these a lot. We talk about this often, Dan, that we love these distance races. But with a horse like Next, he tries to find them and sort of pin paps his, you know, campaign each year around them. And it's been very successful and arguably the one to beat, even though he's going to go a little shorter than normal. And we'll throw up our time form U.S. pace projector. Next is a very tactical horse. He can go to the lead if necessary. He likes to sit just off the pace. And that's probably the plan because Drake's Passage, the New York bred, is stretching out in distance. And Drake's Passage looks like the speed. He does. I mean, looked very good winning the commentator last time out. Dominant performance, one of his best in his career so far. And I think, you know, the speed types can be interesting in a race, especially like this one, right? Stretching out in distance. But to me, um, you know, I think this sets up like a horse for next. You talked about his tactical sort of form where he can sit off of it and get sort of that stalking trip. And I think time form, the pace projections here are pretty much spot on. And if you believe the pace will be fast for this distance, the number three, Krupi, has the LP flag over his chiclet. That indicates he has the fastest time form U.S. late pace rating, and that horse is in very good form right now. But we'll start things off with the number one, lure him in. He's a very likable horse. He's earned over a half million dollars in his career. It was a very productive claim for $40,000 last summer. He's come back, and he's won a stakes race for Florida Breads, the Sunshine Classic. He did win a race earlier in his career, going a mile and a quarter on the the turf so i'm not too worried about the distance i'm a little bit worried about the form he's in right now yeah his recent form isn't the best you can see obviously he had the win back in january but since then his last two he sort of trailed off one of them was at Gulfstream. then they sent him to lone star for the sexton mile and to me just needed to show more i'm not saying that the the field was weak but he never really made up any ground in that field and to me that's a concern at the mile trip now he's going to stretch back out you talked about having an experience going long on another surface on the turf I just think this might be a, a little bit of a tough spot for him to kind of regroup. Di Vernon is the number two, and he made his stakes debut last time out in the Isaac Murphy Marathon at Churchill Downs, and he was no match for Next. Next must have beaten him by a dozen lengths that day, so he's got a lot to find if he's going to turn the tables on that bow. Yeah, that's tough in itself, right? Trying to beat next in a spot like this. And he's got a face mask parade again, who was only two and a quarter lengths behind him. Uh, my concern with him, Dan, is when I look at him, I mean, he's had some good performances, some really nice wins. When you look at his two wins, you look at that performance last time out, you can say he's second best, but his form's a little streaky for me. And to see him finish a well-beaten second, sure, it was an improved performance from his prior two, but I still think he's going to need a huge step forward against some of the others. I think the connections of Krupp, he always felt that he was going to be a late maturing, long distance horse. And I love the way how Todd Pletcher's managed him just very slowly, getting his confidence up, gradually stretching him out in distance, gradually stepping him up in class. And it certainly paid dividends last time out in the suburban. Remember, he was good enough to finish third in the Pegasus World Cup earlier this year. Now, where I'm willing to give Krupy the benefit of the doubt, mass parades also in this race, he'll finish third, is that this track at Saratoga seemed to be very speed friendly. I know the pace was solid, but Krupy had to come widest and he's grinding this out through the stretch. Yeah, this was a really nice win for him. And he's really been a handy horse. You look at his record and you talked about the connections, maybe having some high hopes for him and kind of planning his career. I agree. I think he needs to go longer. I think this is the great next spot for him going to a mile and three ace. And um, it's, it's going to be interesting to see the pace. I think obviously you mentioned the LP flag was attached to him in the time form pace projections. He's going to close. We know that we see that. And, um, depending how the track plays this weekend, that could be a little bit of a deciding factor of where you use him, but you cannot knock his performance after it, considering not only did he win, but it was his first race since coming back stateside. 
Mass Parade is the number four. And this guy's got some back class. He won the Ohio Derby as a three-year-old, but he's sort of been reborn as a longer distance stayer on the dirt. He won the Temperance Hill, the race we're going to show you at Oaklawn Park. This is back in March. And again, I like the way he grinded this out. The trip worked out pretty well for Mass Parade, but he was very game to pull it off at a big price. The problem is he was no match for Next in his subsequent start, finishing behind Next and Di Vernon, and then Krupe got the better of him in the Suburban. Yeah, it's tough. But when you watch this performance, it makes you wonder, maybe he's a horse in here that is a little bit of a sleeper. And to me, when you go back to the Temperance Hill at Oaklawn, it was a very stacked field. It was a competitive group. It wasn't a graded stakes event, $200,000 on the line. And I thought he got a very good trip in there. You look at Classic Causeway, tried to take that one on the front end, and he was closing from off of it. So uh, it's tough. It's tough to say that you think he can really beat some of his other foes, considering they have finished in front of him in those last two efforts. But I actually liked the way that he raced in the Suburban. He wasn't as far back as Krupe. And, you know, he only missed by three quarters of the length when it was all said and done and really didn't miss second by much. So to me, um, certainly a horse you at least have to consider using underneath. The five is Drake's Passages. He is our projected pace setter from Time Form US, and he's coming off a sharp victory against New York Reds and the commentator. Let's watch this race. This is contested over a wet track, and he's the big favorite in this race. He's expected to win, and Manny Franco just gave him a wonderful ride on the lead. He just dropped the anchor on the backstretch. They went 48 and four to the half. No surprise, Drake's Passage has plenty left in the tank to sprint on home. He's going to have to stretch out in distance. His sire, Tonalist, stretched out from winning the Peter Pan at a mile and an eighth to win the Belmont at a mile and a half. Maybe Drake's Passage can emulate him. And maybe he can. It just is a question of how far can his early foot carry him on the front end. Obviously, at a mile and an eighth, he had no issues, but he was against New York Reds, and it was just a little bit of a different ball game at that mile and an eighth trip. So to me, obviously, the waters are certainly deeper. We keep on saying next his name, and just others in here have a little bit more of a proven track record at these extended distances. But um, we also know that sometimes speed on the front end in these races, if they get to the front, they can settle things down and slow down. If that's the case, a horse like Drake's pa Passage, excuse me, is sort of a blooming type who's getting better with each race, and maybe he can at least hang around for something. And next has just been masterfully handled by Doug Cowens. He's won six of his last seven starts. They've just found his niche going longer distances. And his last race off the layoff and the Isaac Murphy speaks for itself on paper. He simply pressed the pace setter, a pretty good horse in classic causeway, blew by him with three-eighths of a mile to go, and then just breeze to the wire. If he repeats any of his recent buyer speed figures, he's just going to be too good for this field. Yes, he is going to cut back to a mile and three-eighths. Yeah, you look at these buyers and you don't necessarily expect them for races like this, right? Super long races, whether it's mile and a half, we've seen them win at a mile and three quarters. But uh, with that said, I think you kind of said everything about him. Um, not to kind of steal all of your words, Dan, but he's the horse to beat on paper. He has that tactical early foot and um, his win margins kind of say it all, especially when you look at who he's been facing. Spencer's boy Luna reeled off four wins in a row late last year and early this year, but that, those races were at Mahoning and at Mountaineer, and as they've stepped him up, he hasn't been able to sort of duplicate that form. His most recent start was at Keeneland. If you want to give him the wet track excuse, fine. If you want to give him the Pyrenees excuse, that's fine as well. We've seen that horse come back and win the Pimlico Special and then run an excellent second in the Stephen Foster. A lot of class questions, a lot of distance questions. And if you go back to that race at Keeneland, you talk about Pyrenees. I mean, he still was fourth beaten by 10 and a half. So this is a huge step up in class. He's going to get tested for distance as well. And um, we haven't seen him since April. I know he's been working at the Mercury Equine Center and he's got a slew of, of drills there. And obviously he should be fit, but being fit and being fit for a mile and three ace against this group is a different story. Before we take a look at our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos, Saratoga Del Mar right around the corner. Top pick time, Friday race of the day. We hate to chalk out, but next has just been too good. And he's going to go for his second Brooklyn in a row. And he, again, he's going to be real tough. I just don't want to have any money in against him. I can't bet against him in this spot. I mean, we talked about him. Just the way that he wins and it's effortless and the numbers that he's producing, he's obviously the horse to beat in paper. And, you know, sometimes we try to get cute or clever. This is a race, Dan. I didn't want to do either of those things. I mean, he is the horse to beat. But Krupe is in very, very good form, and he should be able to threaten at least with a late run. We'll see if Drake's passage can control things on the front end. But on paper, it's all next, and I'm curious to see what's next for him if he gets through the Brooklyn.